All right, guys. I got a new carburetor set up. It was fairly cheap, about sixty bucks for everything. Got it off Amazon. Um, I'll can, I'll post a link down in the descriptions. So what I'm gonna do is, or what I was gonna do was to go ahead and swap this motor that I have right here that has been proven as a good motor. And that one, when I hit it on a bike with the stock carburetor and muffler, it was doing 40 miles an hour easy. And it was actually with the, almost the same gearing as what's on this bike. And this one's only doing like 27 miles an hour. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do because that one's already got the governor delete, got everything done to it. I'm just going to delete the governor on this motor. We're going to do the carb swap. For right now, I'm going to leave the stock exhaust. Just for the fact that I like this shield and the way it's set up for her. There might be some internal things I can maybe rip out of it to get it to flow a little better. If not, then I will make a new exhaust that will run down over back inside here and then down. But for right now, I'm just going to leave that exhaust. So basically, I'm going to go ahead and get the chain off, get the clutch pulled off. We'll go ahead and I'll get a box and trash bag, and then we'll crack this case open, let all the oil flow down in, into that. And then uh, we'll drain the fuel and start getting this carburetor pulled off. If I remember right, when I did the, uh, on that motor there, when I pulled out the governor, it was actually pretty simple on these motors. I know the 212s and the Predator, all the Predator motors, you got this stupid little clip that you got to try to pull out. But I think on this one, it was fairly simple to pull it off. So we'll go ahead and get this thing cracked open and we'll go from there. All right, guys, this is what I like to do. Um, you just take a box, take a trash bag, and then you, it'll catch all your oil and then it's easy to get rid of it and put it in the container or whatever you guys want to put your oil but basically what I'm going to do is just tilt this bike a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and get the chain pulled off which I already got the mesh link off and then uh, go ahead and get the clutch off and then when I crack all these loose I'll leave the top uh, bolt in and knock this loose right here and all this oil will just drain right into this box. I was going to take the engine off but I don't really see the point when I can just pop all this off to get the governor out and then just pop it back together and refill it back with oil. So we'll go ahead and start getting this stuff pulled off. We'll probably go ahead and re-grease this too. Pull this, uh, you pull this little clip off right here, slip that out, rub a little bit of oil inside there. There you go, and then you just let it drain. Once it pretty much gets, you'll get a little bit on your crank arm right here, but if anything, you're just helping it out. I got heard nothing. Now the biggest thing when you're pulling this off, make sure that cam does not come out with the cover because if it does, you're going to drop all your push rods and then you will have to take the motor off. And that's what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to get it to release from the cover. There we go. So basically, just take a flat of the screwdriver, get down in there and just push on this and kind of wiggle the cover and then this will release from the cover. And we'll also check the timing just to make sure that this didn't slide out far enough to dump it here. Alright, so basically what I do is get in here, just kind of pry up on this. Sometimes they shoot. <laughs> and then down inside here, there's a the little, it's kind of, it's basically the same clip, it's just, 
On this, it's so much easier to get to because it's on the cover and not down inside the motor. But basically, you just want to get in there and kind of separate this clip. So sometimes what I do is, sometimes you can just grab it and you, you're able to get with two screwdrivers and get them. Sometimes they want to stick really bad. But if you take a hammer, you want to be gentle because you can break the casing. But on either side of it, just give it a couple of hits and it will separate. And then you're able to just slide this clip right to the top. And then you get it off like that. That's what I found out to be the easiest way. I just I tried to get it out before using the hammer just because you can break the casing. And now you can just separate all that and throw all that away. Then this I usually just leave this in. I never I've never had a problem just leaving them in. They never come out. And if it was to come out, then this whole thing would have came off inside the motor. So you don't have to worry about changing that out. So now we just need to go ahead and uh, work on getting the other part of the governor out. So let me get the camera moved and we'll start on that. So I was just sitting here moving the camera. And I went ahead and rotated the motor to check the timing. There's no way for me. I checked to make sure this didn't slide out and be enough room to slip that. And there's not so from the factory this thing is one tooth off you can see the dot on the crank and then the dot on the uh, cam that should be lined up so that is why this motor feels like it's lacking power and why it's only doing 27 mile an hour when it should be going faster and this is from factory because I've never had the side cover off. This is the first time I've pulled the side cover off. So we're going to go ahead and line that back up. Now that's going to be a trick because I'm going to try to do it with without knocking the uh, uh, rods out for the lifters. Because if they fall, then you got to pull the motor because you got to pull the valve cover so you can realign everything back up. So I'm going to attempt to try to hold them up there, slide this out and rotate it and see if we can get it without having to i mean it's not a big deal if you got to pull the motor off it's just it saved more time if if i can just get that to work so we'll go ahead and give this a shot so if you're ever feeling like your motor's lacking power when you get it or you're having an issue where it's not going as fast as it should i would definitely pop the side cover off and check that timing because that's not good to have be i mean one tooth off I didn't think it would run even these motors if they're one tooth off. I figured they have some kind of like sputtering or something. But I mean the motor seemed to run good. It just like I said, it just didn't have the power it should. So we'll go ahead, get this swapped out, and find out if we're pulling the motor or we don't have to pull it. So okay, guys, it was a little bit hard to record and try to do this at the same time, but now you can see that they're uh, they're all aligned. What I did is I took two these two uh, flatheads, stuck them down inside there, and held that with one hand, and then slipped it out, and then uh, rotated it and slipped it back in. So we're all lined up now. It's kind of nice to actually see something that was actually wrong. So now we'll go ahead and we'll start pulling this apart and getting this off, and then. We still got to drain the gas out of it so I can get the fuel line off so we can do the carburetor. But I wanted to get this stuff knocked out of the way because this is the tedious part. The carb is not going to be that hard to get on. So we'll go ahead and start pulling this apart. Alright, 
we might have a problem here. This is actually bent. See if I can't grab a hold of that and straighten out a little bit. All right, we're gonna have to rotate the engine. Try to give us a little bit more room. There we go. Then that just slips right out of there. For some reason this was bent, so it was stopping it from coming out. And then always grab that washer. There's a washer right behind it, and you do not want that flinging around inside the motor. So now we just have to find a bolt and uh, we'll go ahead and run a bolt in there and then uh, I think I still have some JB weld and we'll JB weld it let that dry and then once that dries then we can go ahead and put it back together and then we can start on uh, getting rid of all these brackets and stuff and like I said the carburetor. So this is the stuff I like to use. We'll focus high heat so you don't have to worry about what temperature you get. I'm gonna go ahead and stir it up and then basically just cold cold. Coat the bolt in uh, in this stuff, and then slip it inside there. And like I said, you'll you'll never have a leak, and then you don't got to worry about that nut coming loose or the bolt, because you can either you can stick it in this way in there and put a bolt on the outside, but then you risk the chance if you're not paying attention, it falls inside or opposite way the nut comes loose. So, but this way you're guaranteed, and you're never gonna put the governor back in anyway. So. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and we'll just slip this down inside here. Grab a rag so you can catch any of the excess that comes off it. And then once that, like I said, once that hardens, it, it it's pretty much part of the block and we don't have to worry about any oil leak or anything like that so I guess we'll go ahead and let that sit for about 24 hours and then we'll we'll check it and then we'll get the side cover put back on and go from there All right, it's next morning. All the uh, JB welds hardened up. You can see it's all the way through. And then if I can get the, you can see the bolt right there. It's solid, so we can go ahead and start getting the side cover back on and button that all up. So we'll get that on right now. Alright, so on these, I can't find my, uh, I forget what you call them, but the, they got the Neo nose to separate these. But on this one, you can just take a flat screwdriver and 
grab either side of it, pop it off like that. Now I greased this not too, or oil, put oil on it not too long ago. Looks like there's some wear. I'm not sure if it's bad or not. Seems to still work pretty good. But I'll just take some oil and coat it. Like I said, I not too long ago I already put, I let this actually soak and Pop that back in and then basically just pop this clip back in. What I usually do is I'll let it sit overnight in oil and then clean it really good. That way the oil gets just kind of soaked into the, the copper. And then just use a flat screwdriver again. On these ones are pretty easy because you can, you can get in that little gap right there. Make sure it's all the way in. All right, now we can go ahead and just slap this thing back together. All right, it's all back together now. I'm gonna hold off on putting the chain on. I gotta order a throttle cable because I forgot that the throttle cable that hooks onto these carbs is different than the one the height the setup that's on this so we'll get that I'll get that order it's only take a couple days to get in the next video will have the carburetor done and we will be taking this thing for a ride it should gain power just from that setup but I think I'm gonna see a huge difference just for the fact that the timing was off by one tooth and like I said I'm a surprise how well it ran I figured being one tooth off, you would at least, it would be backfiring or sputtering or doing something, but it really wasn't. So if you guys, there's, I, there's some people out there that see that their bikes are slow too, and I'm wondering if they're off one tooth. It's not, it's not hard to check, and to be honest, it's almost easier to change your oil just by popping the side cover. But I hope you guys have a good Christmas. Thanks for watching. See you next week.